Uh, remember no flash on your camera in the first room? That's where we're headed to the right down the hallway. Right, guys, since uh, we're all here now, um, we're going to do a quick uh, introduction. Uh, first off, uh, for my group, this is Mr. David Elmer. He's going to be us on the hard questions. Ready? <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'll talk to you guys upstairs in the hallway. Sound good? Yeah. I guess not, huh? Alright, David, I think you're one. Oh, one more, one more uh, tour, guys. We have Miss uh, Brenda Boykins here. She's also going to be joining us today for the Senior Level 9 tour, guys. So, David? Alright, well, thank you very much. Um, what we're seeing in front of us are live images from this from space right now. And it looks like we just left the darkness. If you look at the main screen in front of us, you'll see the space come up on the left hand side. We're, fixed, we're out over the ocean, so the images that you see down below the space station right now, they kind of look like land, but it's, it's ocean, unless they're catching one of the islands. Our images that are from space, and these are live images, is the cupola. And I like to point that out, and I'm going to go ahead and talk about it for just a second. The cupola is called the window to the world, and it looks like it, or a micrometeorite. They don't want any damage happening to the window. But you can actually have a 360 degree view of the world out of the cupola. And some of them will go in there on their off time and do photography. Uh, Chris, and he is the, the most important man in the room. because he, And he has to make sure everything comes and goes at the proper time. Um, right next to him, Doug. Uh, no. That's his position, and he's the only person in the room that can speak to the astronauts. Um, it has to be that way. But what's going to happen is NASA's going to turn the cameras off of them and give them their privacy. If for some reason they have to get a hold of them, they can be back in touch with them just like that. But it just turns the cameras off. They get a little peace, quiet, and they're done for the day as well. Every person in this room has a, a position of importance because these guys are flying the space station right now. The astronauts do not have that responsibility. They have jobs to do, but flying the space station is not one of them. The person, if you put a steering wheel in their hand to represent their station, it would be ADCO, Attitude Determination Control Officer. Everybody see ADCO up there? Do you see what represents their station? The baseball bat. They're the attitude controller. <laughs> Ops Planner actually is one of my favorites because of what they do. You see Ops Planner right there, the man in the He's preparing their schedule for tomorrow. And the astronauts have a schedule that they follow. Every five minutes they know what they're supposed to be doing. And he's the one that keeps them on track. Um, what are they doing? Do it. And that's what Ops helps them do, stay on track. We have a biomedical engineer, the BME, right here. And what she does, or that position does, is keeps an eyes uh, uh, look in a period of time when they have to clean up after themselves. A lot of them will go into the cupola. They'll spend the day looking at the world go by. They'll take their cameras in there. They're taking photography. Like I said, Chris Hatfield plays the guitar. And um, that was his way of, in, in, you can't go outside, but that's as close as you can get, get to going outside. And it's mainly just to relax and enjoy uh, yourselves. They don't get to view the outside world as much as you think they would because they don't have little portals for you to look at. How long will it stay? Yeah. Uh, as far as the images that we're seeing, they're controlled by... No, I mean the... Um, the yeah, the orbit. Sorry. Oh, you're talking about the pass? Yes. How, how long do they stay on those? Each, each time that they go around, uh, they'll have a new angle. Right now, well, it's, it's on number two, I think. It's number two. So that, it's that the past, the present, and the future okay. that they're on. Does action, he asked why is there more than one, one uh, orbital pass up? Why? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the reason that there are many on the tracking up map is because, in actuality, uh, the vehicle is orbiting around the Earth, which the Earth is tilted, 
and on its axis. So flying around me, orbiting around the Earth instead of right. <laughs> Now, it was um, closed down in, 19, in the early 1990s. The technology, the console that you're seeing here, were taken out, stored in the Smithsonian, and whenever this room was named a National Historic Landmark, they were brought back and put in the original position you may remember. For example, who remembers this? This is the pneumatic tube system. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the 1960 version of an email. Okay? You open up. You've been working here pretty much all day. You are doing a test. You have three astronauts in the Apollo command line in Florida. All of, all of a sudden, you hear a call that you never hoped to hear. Fire. You hear it again. Fire. What we call the plug test. And all of a sudden, the fire breaks out. Unfortunately, we lost the crew of Apollo 1. Now, Gene Krantz, who is the flight director here at that time, he recounts this day in his book, Failure to Come Out. And he recounts saying that um, he, grabbed his, he grabbed his badge, his car keys, and he sped down NASA Road 1 to get here as soon as possible. <coughs> this was a flight check. We lost these three astronauts in the Apollo of the So we are responsible for what happened. Now, at the end of this meeting, you're going to go to your offices, and the very first thing that you're going to do is you're going to write two words on what we fail to do. And conquer. Because we will never, ever take anything for granted again. Now, if you ask any flight director or flight controller who Apollo 11 was going to land on the moon just months later, of course, Apollo 11. Now, how many of you here remember this historical event? Right here? Okay. Well, this room was in charge of that for the landing. Gene Krantz was here. Again, very first time that we attended anything like that before. All of a sudden, you hear an alarm. A 401 alarm in this room. And it's coming from this position right here. The ECOM operator is going to ECOM. Now, the ECOM operator, he's nervous. At the time coming down, 45 seconds, 30 seconds, 25 seconds. All of a sudden, you hear a call. Contact. Now, the flight control team here, they were kind of nervous because there was a controller that was looking at a stopwatch. Whenever you were waiting for the level 9 to uh, start, did you all notice the uh, mural of the astronaut holding up his hands? It was painting. That painting was done by Alan Bean. Now, whenever you see his paintings, which are shown all around the world, all right, folks, so you can see him level 9. Maybe you got three. 